Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees. And here we are in late March of 2024, and we are getting ready for mango season this year. And it's promising to be a great year. There's so many mangoes on all the trees. And when you're looking to buy a mango tree, uh, there's many different places you could do the research to learn about the different varieties. Somebody that doesn't have a lot of knowledge might just put a seed in the ground and hope to get mangoes in the future. But when you do it that way, you really don't know what you're going to get. And you also don't know how long it's going to take or even if you're going to get anything. So I do recommend you search out the best varieties for your situation. Uh, most people don't have an unlimited uh, place to plant. So they have to be particular in which varieties they choose. Well, uh, I look at a lot of different resources. But my favorite resource for mangoes is Alex at Tropical Acres Palms. It has over 300 varieties of different mangoes growing here in south florida where i live so it's a similar environment and i'm looking from his experience what he found to be best and not best now a lot of the great tasting mangoes that are out there now have come from this program by a fellow named gary zill who planted thousands of mango seeds years ago and he picked the best of those and named those varieties and many of those are considered newer maybe uh, starting in 2000 they started coming out and and they don't they haven't been out there as long as some other proven mangoes over the years so you don't know which mangoes even though if they taste great might do best disease wise and 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 growth wise and so on alex at tropical acres farms has done the research and put these mangoes in the ground some of them many years ago maybe uh, 10 years ago and they started to grow and so he's to his best knowledge and experience has been able to tell us not only how great the mango tastes but also the growing habits of the mango which is very important when you're picking a particular variety for your yard now if you want to be sure and know everything that's going on you can go with the old classic uh, mangoes that have been around forever you know the size you know the taste you know how they do disease resistant but if you want to start experimenting with the new varieties which i do and i love and i recommend you definitely want to have a good source like Alex at Tropical Acres or somebody else who's been growing mangoes for quite a while uh, to kind of give you a good head start. Well, in today's video, it's uh, March 21st, which this was filmed a couple of days ago. Now it's like March 25th. But we wanted to see what mangoes are looking promising this year, 2024. And to give us a good example of what mangoes do great and when their season is. And Alex to share some of the experience with these mango trees. If you are looking for a mango tree in 2024, in today's video, we're going to look at some eight mango trees that are trees you should consider for your yard. Alex is going to be discussing these mangoes, and we're going to put links below to his website and YouTube channel and all that great stuff. And uh, I have a lot of other videos with Alex at Tropical Acres Farms. If you have any of these trees that we mentioned today growing in the ground, please comment on them. Uh, what your opinion and experience has been and if you don't have those trees in the ground uh, consider getting those uh, so i'm really excited about this season and i'm really excited about this video so here we go so today is march 21st 2024 and uh, we're going to be looking at some of our uh, mango trees that have fruit on them now um, and kind of how far along they are and so the tree that we're standing next to right here is a dot mango, one of about, well, one of four dot trees that we have here on the farm. And dots are one of our most consistent blooming trees. I mean, we get fruit from our dot trees every single year because they flower very easily. They're an early season mango. And um, you can see the fruit on this is from the first bloom that this tree had, and this fruit is already uh, almost plum size, I guess. Now it has some fruit on it that's a little smaller than that, but um, most of the fruit is decent size at this point, at least golf ball size, if not larger. And uh, if you look up in the canopy, uh, you can actually see there's still some flowering occurring, and there's some flowers still coming out over here. So this tree decided that it didn't make enough fruit even though it looks like it's got plenty of fruit and uh, should have a great crop regardless. But it could end up that on a lot of the trees that we're going to look at, um, that uh, we end up with some uh, very late fruit on them uh, because of this little bit of uh, secondary bloom that we're seeing, which is cool. We might get like, you know, an encore for dot 
in late July or August or something like that. And uh, that's always neat to have and compare to. So anyway, Dot was selected by the Zill family of uh, Boynton, Delray Beach, back in the, I think the 1940s. It was named after Dorothy Zill, which is uh, Gary and Walter and uh, Marla Zill's mother, or was. And it, they didn't really know what it came from when they selected it, or, or it was probably a volunteer seedling, I suppose. I think they speculated that Carrie was maybe its parent. Uh, USDA did a pedigree analysis back about 20 years ago, and uh, they found that the likely parent was the Zill. And uh, my thinking is it was probably a hybrid between the Zill, the old Zill mango, and the Carrie. Um, so I would say the growth habit is somewhere in between the two. It's more spreading than vertical. And they've got kind of open canopies. But anyway, um, lots of fruit on these. We're going to have a nice crop on them. And it's one of my personal favorite mangoes and one of the most popular varieties we grow. So it's always great when something that you love is going to be in abundance. So we should have a nice supply of dots this year. And uh, we're looking forward to it. I know there's so much positive information about this variety. Is uh, Any negatives? Yeah. Um, for us, the biggest negative is that we have to actively pick them, which means like we got to check them every day because if they ripen on the tree, they don't taste very good. They get kind of a musky component, and I can smell it. Like when I smell that musk, I just toss the fruit because I already know what it's going to taste like when it's cut open. So I look for them to just start to break some uh, yellow color on them, and I pick them as soon as I see that. So that's a little frustrating because you like to have the luxury of allowing a, a fruit to tree ripen, but uh, this one is just a bad idea to do that with. So, But for other people, this mango gets fungus a lot out west. Uh, I used to have uh, seven of them. In fact, uh, I think at least one of these was a transplant from Loxahatchee. And um, they would flower, but they would get so much fungus uh, that uh, it was very frustrating, and the fruit looked very ugly out there. So, up to a certain point inland, you can grow this and it will fruit. I don't know exactly where the the delineation is in terms of where you need to just give up on the idea of growing dot. Um, so your mileage may vary on this variety. I've certainly seen them producing further inland than we are here. Um, you know, we're like less than two miles from the ocean here, but I've seen dot trees fruiting well a little further west than this. Um, and it might depend on your individual yard. Uh, but if the fungus isn't a problem, they fruit pretty well. Like we get good production from them. I won't classify them as a heavy producer, but they're not slouches by any stretch of the imagination. They, they produce pretty good for us. Um, and uh, it's just such an awesome mango. Um, I always, uh, just the other day we had somebody here that, uh, was planting some trees in Lake Worth Beach. And I'm like, well, what can I recommend to this person that I couldn't recommend to somebody maybe in Loxhatchee or Indian Town or something like that? And I realized we had a dot tree in a pot. And I was like, ah, oh, this is somebody that can grow a really wonderful mango successfully. So, um, so they got a dot tree among some other varieties. So. So mm. set, as soon as it starts breaking a yellow cola color, pick it, and then how long before it usually ripens on usually your Usually within a few days, like three to four days max. Usually three days from the time we've picked it, the dot is ready to eat. Um, and then it's got actually a better, if they're picked that way, they don't go overripe as quick. They go overripe on the tree a lot faster. So like the whole fruit is yellow, and it's not, it doesn't get that funk like immediately whereas when they ripen on the tree and they turn yellow you've got like less than a day to eat it before it starts to develop that uh distasteful component so sure and the name is uh misleading because you and i know it's named after a person but it when is, you hear yeah. dot you would think it's a small mango but this is a <laughs> yeah no it's a medium mango. yeah medium sized mango um not small uh you can get some small ones but no it's it's more of a mid-sized fruit um, and they can get nice color here. I've had them turn like kind of a pink or red, uh, depending on how much blush color they're getting. 
Otherwise, most of the time, if they're not getting too much sun, they're they're going to turn yellow. So, how old is this tree behind you? Must have been. It's ten years old or so. It's in that range, maybe eleven years old. I'm not sure. It might be like eleven years old. So, this one got its first hard prune just this last year. So they're like I would call them like moderately vigorous trees to moderately to vigorous trees. They're not small trees. Um, and they've got fairly open canopies too, but um, if you've got the space for one, they're terrific. You can maintain them at this size. I, this tree now at this point is like, uh, well, it might be over 12 feet tall because of the branches that I left on it, but the one next to it is, you know, around 12 feet in height, and the one over here is a little shorter. But they all have plenty of fruit on them. So even with the hard prune, it's still fruited really yes, well. Yes, which I think is such a great sign, right? You know, like we're always concerned if we cut a mango tree back really harshly, is it going to fruit the following year? Even if we pruned it on time, as I would say, because I probably pruned this in late July or early August. I can't remember. Um, but I was thinking, huh, it's going to be interesting to see how this tree does next year. And it's loaded with fruit. So that's that's pretty positive. When you say you did a hard prune, how we cut out the center of the canopy. The center, okay. Yeah, and I actually I cut some of the side branches as well um, that were a little taller, but um, it it handled it fine. So wonderful! I'm yeah. glad I have one. Yeah, <laughs> because of your recommendation, I ended up getting one. And oh, good. Hopefully, it does growing well. nicely. It has a lot of mangoes. Great! Oh, that's wonderful to hear. All right. Okay, we'll look at some more. Okay. Here we are, it's uh, 21st of uh, March, 2024. Uh, I'm standing in front of one of our lemon meringue mango trees. This is another really important early season mango for us, and one of the most popular early season mangoes, and one of the most popular mangoes in general, not just amongst the early season varieties. So as the name suggests, lemon meringue has very much a citrus flavor. Its real name isn't lemon meringue. That name was put on it uh, maybe like 30 years ago. Its real name is Po Piu Kalei, and it's from uh, the country of Myanmar, or Burma as it was formerly known. And uh, it's adapted pretty well to Florida. Um, they're kind of um, somewhat vigorous vertically growing trees, so their growth habit's not great. You know, we prefer trees that are a little less vigorous and easier to keep small. But the flavor on lemon meringue is really terrific and super popular. Um, so, uh, we get pretty consistent fruit production from our lemon meringue trees, but that's not the case for everybody. And we do hear about lemon meringues being kind of alternate bearers for some people, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, especially our older ones have done pretty well. And these two are probably our largest, oldest lemon meringue trees. Um, we have another one a little further north ways, um, in the middle of the place that, uh, is a little smaller than these, but has a pretty good crop on it. Um, it's not a big mango, but it's got pretty good anthracnose resistance. So if you're one of these people that's like in a humid area and you're concerned about anthracnose and scab affecting your uh, your mango tree and your flowers and your fruit, we were talking about the dot mango a little earlier having that issue. This variety doesn't really have that problem too much. It will ab absolutely fruit well in Loxhatchee, the acreage, or in places like Naples, um, uh, places that are, you know, near the Everglades or near Lake Okeechobee or what have you. So um, good variety for uh, marginal conditions and good variety for great conditions uh, because the flavor is so good, it's worth growing over here too. Um, so uh, we've got, I think, a pretty good crop on these trees. Um, we don't have a ton of them, but you know we've got, uh, I guess, at least uh, seven in production, I suppose. Um, and a few of them don't have as much fruit as these ones do, but uh, almost all of them have fruit on them this year. And we're looking forward to uh, being able to share this one with our customers. Now, when you say almost all of them, so do you have one that has very little fruit? Yeah, we have two that are in just a terrible spot. Okay, so and that would just, be the they're reason. They're just shaded out way too much. Um, so that was just circumstance that and we've gotten fruit from those trees and they may even have some fruit on them, but nowhere near as anything looking like this or even some of the other variety, um, other lemon meringue trees that we have. So. That's very interesting for people to know that are planting a yard. 
Uh, if you hide in a shady spot, it could make that much of a difference. So it's yeah. really important. In fact, we can look at one right now, Paul, that used to be in shade, and then the mangoes behind it got cut back. It's a smaller lemon meringue, but it's still got you know a bunch of fruit on it. So here, let's walk sure. over here real quick and look at this uh, little lemon meringue tree. So uh, I have, I'm guilty of taking a lot of budwood off of this little guy just because it's within reach when people order budwood from us. But it's, uh, it's definitely got some, some fruit on it, different parts here and over here. So even little lemon meringue trees can fruit. So, uh, but uh, your mileage may vary on this guy. So if that was in a pot, what size pot would that be? Actually? Oh, uh, at least a uh, 25 gallon, I guess. Yeah. So can you get mangoes like that in a 25 gallon pot? Yeah, sure. Now, how long can you keep it in a pot that size? I guess if you root pruned it periodically and you didn't feed it too much, um, you know, maybe indefinitely. But I would probably prefer to keep them, you know, permanently in a slightly larger pot, I suppose. Um, but yeah. And that's not even a dwarf mango. No. I know you don't like the names, but that's like a yeah. moderate to vigorous. Uh, yeah, tree. yeah, it's definitely a moderate, vig uh, moderately vigorous mango to vigorous. So it's not as aggressive as something like a Valencia Pride or a Dupuis Saigon or an ST Maui or something. But um, you know, it, it's no dwarf by any means. No. So, or even a small tree. So this tree here, the lemon meringue, even though it comes from Miramar, it's been, uh, seedlings have come up in the United States. And yeah. And they're very popular with Zill's Nursery. Yes, so Gary Zill loved this mango, still loves it, I, I believe. And uh, he wanted to um, use it as a parent in his hybridization program to get some citrus-flavored mangoes that were adapted to Florida's climate and everything. And so he had uh, a couple of selections. One was the lemon zest, and one is the orange sherbet that are seedlings of the lemon meringue. And they are improvements upon the lemon meringue in some respects. They're actually more robustly flavored than lemon meringue, which is already a pretty good mango. And in the case of uh, both of those trees, they can also be, they're capable of being more productive than the lemon meringue as well. Um, lemon zest has had problems with bacterial black spot for us, so we no longer grow too many of them. But a lot of people have very good success growing lemon zest, and it's an incredible mango. And uh, orange sherbet, also amazing variety, uh, a little less vigorous than lemon meringue, more bushy, nicer growth habit, I would say. And we can I take think Walter Zill has one called a, a Zhang Strain or something. Yi Zhuan. Xi Zhuan. But that's, that's a like lemon, a, that's a lemon zest seed. Like. Lemon zest seed. Yeah. Okay, so so grand, that is a grandchild, grandchild of lemon meringue. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, and that's a good mango. Um, and we we have uh, one here actually. Um, we'll talk about that someday if we haven't talked about it already. I guess. So uh, I don't remember doing a video about uh, Yi Zhuan. So maybe one day we'll do a video yeah. on it. Okay, okay. so I'm standing in front of Prieto Mango. Prieto is from Cuba. It's one of a number of varieties from Cuba that we grow here on the farm in West Palm Beach. Um, and Prieto, uh, it means black in Old Spanish. Uh, I don't know how often people use that word anymore when speaking Spanish, but um, I guess it's to imply that this mango is black, but it's really not. <laughs> Uh, it turns, uh, well, it'll get some red and yellow color here at, at maturity, but it's not a very big fruit. Um, however, it is a very prolific tree. It has a classic, what we call a classic mango flavor, and it does have a little bit of fiber. Enough to notice, but not necessarily anything uh, absurd. So there's definitely more, more fibrous mangoes than this variety, but it has a very nice, very sweet, classic mango flavor. And most people that try it actually enjoy it. Um, so the cool thing is this tree flowers for us every single year. We always get a lot of fruit off of it. The fruit set is very good. But this year we had a very early bloom on it, I guess. And we actually have um, inside the canopy here, we have some fruit that's approaching maturity. So it's a smaller fruit in general. Yes, it's not a big mango. 
that's that's about as big as they get. And that's I, interesting because I've had some other Cuban mangoes and they were small also, right? Yeah, well, uh, ch- Biscochuelo is small, and um, so is uh, Manga Blanca, but Chino mango is not small, and San Felipe is a big mango, so a few of the Cuban varieties actually get some size to them. Um, I'm not sure how many mangoes I got to count are on this tree that are close to being ready. Whoops. That one, I think, was split open. But these ones look good. So, anyway, and there's a few in other pockets of the canopy, too. So we'll get to enjoy these pretty soon. Here's another cluster right here. Sometimes I get fruit off of this tree that I call popcorn mangoes because they're really tiny, like nubbins, and they have like no seed. And you can just like pop them in your mouth and, and eat the whole mango at once. Well, what's the flavor of this mango in it's general? It's classic flavored. Classic. So it's like a sweet, rich, uh, stone fruit forward flavor, like peach, um, nectarine. Uh, that kind of flavor. How popular is it in Cuba? If you go there, is it? Very I don't popular? know. There are certainly people in Cuba that have heard of it because I've they they when I talk about Cuban mangoes and I mention it, they say, "Oh yeah, I've heard of that one," or "I'm familiar with that one." But there are people from Cuba that have never heard of it. So I don't know if it's in particular certain regions of Cuba where they go grow Prieto. But I will say this: it's one of the better tasting of the Cuban mangoes. I like it better than Bisco Chuelo. I certainly like it better than Manga Blanco, which I don't like at all. Um, I like it better than San Felipe. The only one that I would compare it to in, uh, in terms of like where I would rate it is Chino. Chino's a very good Cuban mango. Um, but yeah, this is a good mango. Um, it's just not super popular because it's small. Anything small, people tend to ignore and not get excited about. But I like to highlight small mangoes sometimes. It's a moderately vigorous tree to vigor, vigorous, I'd say. This was planted to, uh, as a pretty large three-gallon, maybe even a seven-gallon, um, because we had it growing in a pot for a little while. I remember we bought this uh, at the Fairchild Mango Festival a long time ago, I think when the year they did mangoes of Cuba. So this tree at this point is probably like uh, nine years of age or something like that. Um, yeah, about that, and it's probably been in the ground for about seven years. So, nice. so this is uh, one of our Phoenix mango trees. I think we have five of them, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Phoenix is an early season variety that came out of Gary Zill's breeding project. Um, and it's one of the best mangoes that came out of the program. It is really, really rich, complex. Like, there's a lot going on in this mango um, when it's uh, dead ripe. Uh, so it was a seedling of a mango called Jakarta, um, which you may have heard of before. Jakarta is an Indian-flavored mango that was selected in South Florida at the Zill Homestead a long time ago. Gary used Jakarta in his breeding program, and this was a seedling of that mango. Uh, I think it didn't fruit well as a seedling initially, and um, maybe it wasn't flowering or something, and Gary cut it to a stump. He was going to get rid of this variety. Um, and it came back from uh, you know below the ground. Seedlings do that a lot. And it, uh, it fruited, and when it fruited, it was so impressive they had to keep it. So uh, they kept it, and uh, it's turned out to be one of the best-tasting uh, hybrids that Gary did. Um, so it fruits pretty well for us, and it actually has fruited consistently. So we get mangoes from Phoenix every year. I also have a Phoenix tree in my backyard uh, that, um, that Gary gave me that's on dwarfing rootstock. And that tree has grown a little less aggressively than Phoenix trees normally do. Phoenix is a very aggressive tree. This is like a what we would call a hyper vigorous mango in the same category as mangoes like ST Maui, uh, Valencia Pride, that kind of thing. You can also see it's got kind of a vertical growth habit, which I don't like so much. Um, I prefer mangoes that have more of a spreading habit um, and kind of a dense canopy too. Um, but uh, like all our other mangoes, we can keep it pruned probably and keep it at or under 15 feet in height and spread. So um, it flowers very well for us, 
and uh, we get, I'd call it um, a moderate to good producer for us, somewhere in that range. It's not a heavy bearer. It's not one of these ones that's going to have like clusters of mangoes hanging from each panicle, but um, we get more than enough fruit from them. However, um, some people that are growing them in um, perhaps more humid areas haven't been as successful from what I understand. So again, your mileage may vary just like dot. Um, speaking of dot, I speculate that dot may have been the uh, paternal parent of this mango. Uh, Gary only recorded it as being a Jakarta seedling. Didn't spec. I don't think he speculated on the paternal parentage, but it has a similar shelf life to Dot, which is not very good. This mango will get uh, kind of overripe quickly if it's allowed to tree ripen. So needs to be picked as soon as it's turning. Um, but uh, when it ripens, it tastes uh, really amazing. It is. I guess I I don't know whether to classify it as a classic Sabacid flavored mango or an Indian West Indian flavored mango. It has just a hint of that Indian West Indian resin that you sometimes find uh, in like the Zill 80 mango, which is another classically flavored mango, but has just a hint of that resin in there somewhere, um, which it got from Jakarta, of course. But uh, otherwise, I'd probably say Phoenix leans more towards being a classically or classics of acid flavored mango. And most people that try it are just blown away by it. It's a, it's a special fruit. So, um, and we've got a lot of mangoes on them. Paul, you can kind of zoom in, I guess, and see. We've got more flowers coming out of it. Uh, this tree made plenty of fruit. Uh, this is another one that just isn't satisfied with the crop that it has, I guess. So it's going to perhaps carry some even later ones if, uh, if that this latest bloom holds on. But we're going to get plenty of Phoenix this year. So looking forward to it. Okay, right. this uh, here behind me is one of uh, a number of sweet tart mangoes that we have here. Um, so sweet tart was a um, hybrid of the Zill into Chinese mango um, from Gary Zill. And uh, I believe it was one of the older um, hybrids from his program. When I say older, like I think it might have been one of the ones that he planted in the 90s, um, maybe the early 90s, I don't recall. But anyway, it was also one of the best varieties that came out of his program, and it is my personal favorite mango, which is a big part of the reason why we planted a lot of them here. We were so impressed with this variety, and still to this day, year after year, it uh, it never uh, fails to impress us at some point. Um, and uh, if they flower, sweet tart trees are very productive. You can see this tree has a lot of fruit on it. Um, in fact, they make so much fruit it would justify thinning them a lot of years to get some better size to the mangoes because otherwise it can be kind of a small mango. Um, if you thin them out, they can be more medium sized. Um, but I usually don't thin my mangoes. So anyway, this is a mid-season variety. It usually ripens here. It might start in late June, but it's peak seasons typically in July. I've had them last in August, so it can be a later mid-season mango too. Uh, Paul, you were saying that some people don't know how to pick this variety. So my suggestion usually is the moment you see any yellow color break on this, pick it. You can let them tree ripen, and, and in my experience, they tree ripen fine, but they can sometimes have uneven ripening if they if they ripen on the tree. It's not always the case, but it happens quite a bit with uh, sweet tart. Uh, you can pick these green. Like any mango, if you pick it too green, it's not going to taste the same, but when they're on the money, they usually don't bleed much of any sap, or they'll bleed clear sap um, when they're green. And, uh, and they'll ripen and they taste outstanding. Um, but I like to pick them when they're just starting to show some uh, yellow color breaks somewhere on the fruit. Sometimes that's on the nose. When they ripen unevenly, they'll get what we call soft nose, which means they ripen from the bottom up and the bottom can be uh, a little bit riper than the rest of the fruit. So for me, that's never been an issue to keep me from eating them. Uh, I really enjoy this variety. Um, and it holds up well even in years where we get a little too much rainfall, like last year and the year before that. Um, we've had bricks tests on this fruit where 
they were uh, around 29 or 30, which is just incredible. Um, really, really robust, sweet, tart balance. Um, and uh, one of my favorite mangoes to eat on a consistent basis. It's not necessarily my favorite mango every year. Like there might be an individual variety that exceeds it some years, but on a consistent, like in a general sense, it's my favorite mango. So how common, because I've had the uneven ripening. So is that pretty common with this mango? It's common, but it's not constant. So like we'll get years where, you know, 90% of them or more are ripening fine. And then we'll get years where maybe half of them have the issue or something like that. So um, they're not always consistent about the ripening uh, factor. But like I said, even the uneven ripened ones for me taste perfectly fine. So Speaking of taste, how accurate is the name Sweet Tart for this mango? Very accurate. It's, uh, it's absolutely got a tart component to it, but it's not like a mango that you can't stomach because it's so tart well maybe for some people but like it's a, it's an exceptionally sweet mango as well so um it's got a good balance between the two i guess but if you want it to be more on the tart side you eat it and slice it when it's a little less ripe as it gets riper it becomes really sweet and less tart and it starts to take on like a coca-cola syrup element to it and some people like it more at that stage so Depends on whether you're a tart type of person or not. So I've had two people tell me about sweet tart mango, and I confirmed with my tree, it's a branch breaker. Literally broke yeah. a branch off my tree and two other people I know that tree. Yeah, right, yes. Uh, well, I don't think we've had a branch break from it before, but I could certainly see that happening because it will overload. And that's one of the other reasons why you might elect to thin the fruit if you decide not to thin the fruit and you're worried it will compromise uh, the branch, then you might want to support it with a board or like a two by four or something like that to prevent that from occurring so it doesn't shear the limb off of the tree and then you potentially lose all your fruit because it, it uh, broke off before it was properly mature. And I've seen that happen with mango trees before, um, at least other varieties. Okay, behind me here is a mango called Ambrosia. This was another hybrid out of Gary Zill's breeding project, but one that didn't get much attention or propagation. The Zill Nursery only grafted it one year, from what I recall. Um, Gary told me that it was a hybrid of the Kit um, and the East Indian. Now, Gary used Kit in his breeding program, but most of the progeny from it were hybridized with the Gary mango. Um, this one he believes the paternal parent was the East Indian, which is kind of one of the most, well, is one of the most popular mangoes in the um, nation of Jamaica. So uh, this mango has what I would say uh, is a classic mango flavor with a hint of Indian resin. And uh, it's more interesting flavor, I would say, than the kit itself. But it doesn't get quite as big. From what I've seen, they're kind of very round shaped mangoes and probably like more medium size, although perhaps they can get larger than the ones that, that we've picked. Um, and it's been fruiting for several years, but it took a very long time for this tree, even though it's grafted, to start bearing fruit for us. But ever since it started, it's been getting a little better. It looks like its production is improving. So uh, it's got a pretty nice looking crop right now. It is kind of a lanky looking growth habit, like a kit, um, like its parent. So it's definitely one that you're gonna have to prune if you try to grow it. We're definitely gonna be pruning this tree in the future, perhaps after this year, just to get its shape um, a little better. It has a very open style canopy, and uh, we'll see how it tastes this year. Um, but this is one that we're evaluating and one that there's not many examples of out there. There's a few people that have them. Um, but I haven't heard really feedback from other people that are growing it. So, sure. ambrosia. It's ambrosia. a late season mango. Also. Late season. Okay. Yeah, definitely a late season mango. There's not a lot of late season varieties. Speak okay, so this is uh, one of our remaining lemon zest trees. We only have a couple left, um, and it's actually half of a tree. So, years ago, we made the decision to start top working our lemon zest mango trees because of their susceptibility to mango bacterial black spot. However, we had to maintain some 
because we needed budwood to still produce lemon zest trees because there are still people who want to grow lemon zest and there's lots of people in areas where bacterial black spot's not an issue um, who have plenty of success with lemon zest. So um, lemon zest was, as I spoke about earlier, a seedling of the lemon meringue mango from Gary Zill's hybridization program. And it's an incredible tasting mango, very deep, rich citrus uh, flavor. Uh, the name is kind of a misnomer because it does not taste like lemon, uh, to me at least. Uh, most people uh, will say it tastes like an orange candy or orange whatever kind of flavor, but very, very rich and sweet. Um, really an incredible mango, and it was such a shame that we had such poor luck with it here. Um, but we kept them around, and right now this one uh, has a pretty nice crop on it, and uh, we're hoping that the bacterial spot doesn't wreck it. Um, but it, it, if it flowers, it can fruit pretty strongly, and uh, so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have some intact lemon zest fruit to share with everybody this year. But like I said, this is half of a tree because uh, I didn't want to leave the whole stump as a uh, lemon zest. Um, I decided to top work half of this tree. I grafted it over into another variety. Um, and that variety is called Borsha, which is one of the mangoes, I think maybe that we talked about in that Mangoes of India video that we did um, last year. And Borsha has fruit on it. So we come over here and it flowered and has mangoes and it has uh, more flowers coming out now and there's some on the other side. Now it does have some vegetative growth on part of the canopy also, so not the whole canopy has fruit, but there's a good bit of fruit and flowers also still coming out of Borsha on the Borsha half of this tree. And uh, we've had to fight the lemon zest a little bit to make sure that the Borsha uh, starts to kind of dominate the canopy like we want. But we're really excited about having some more Borsha this year because when we tried this mango uh, for the first time, uh, it was really, really amazing. Uh, great Indian flavored mango, uh, at least as good as a Bombay, which is a pretty big endorsement. So um, anytime we see a mango from India doing well here, uh, we get excited about it. So half lemon zest, half Borsha, and hopefully we'll get plenty of fruit from both. Now, with the lemon zest being hardly susceptible to the black spot, yeah, when you, when you have it on another tree or or at least close to another tree, does that potentially harm the other? Tree? Yes, if the one is getting a lot of bacteria black spot, it can spread it to the fruit on the other tree. Um, I'm optimistic that this mango will be resistant to the disease. However, the fruits that we've seen on it, you know, the last couple of years were clean, um, despite being right next to the lemon zest. So um, we'll see how it handles bacterial spot, and hopefully the lemon zest doesn't get, bacterial spot can vary year to year. Hopefully it doesn't get it too bad, so we'll see. Okay, so here uh, is Giselle Mango on March 21st, 2024. Uh, this tree is absolutely loaded, loaded, loaded with fruit. It's going to have to drop a lot of this, unfortunately, but it just has to, just it has too much fruit on it right now. Giselle was also from uh, the uh, breeding project of Gary Zell. I'm getting repetitive on this, I guess, in this video, but um, this was a seedling of an old variety called Tower. Tower, which the Zills had. I guess they must have gotten that from the Brooks Tower Nursery down in Homestead, or uh, down in Miami Dade. I'm not sure if it was in Homestead. Uh, it might have, somewhere in Miami, there was this uh, family, the Towers, that that were in the uh, the nursery trade. So. Um, anyway, it's a very richly flavored orange flesh, Indian, West Indian type flavor, and um, it's just mind-blowingly good. Uh, it has a little bit of fiber, very juicy. I remember Gary describing it as a juice mango, which made me think it was going to be like an East Indian. It's nowhere close to that. You can absolutely slice this mango and eat it, and your mouth won't be full of fiber or anything like that. It just has a little bit of fiber. Um, and uh, very aromatic. Paul, you've tried this. You love it too. Most people that try this, as long as they have an appreciation for that kind of flavor, just really, really like this mango. And we're trying to make it more popular. Um, hasn't been grafted that much, but uh, we graft them. 
and it's a very vigorous tree, so it might be a good mango for California, um, you know, or places like that that need something that's more aggressive. It's not for a small yard. It's probably for one where you can, you know, give it some space. Kind of a, a little lanky, too. We're going to probably have to prune it this year. Hasn't received a hard prune yet. Um, and uh, this particular specimen is a top work, so um, we did not plant this tree directly, but the ones that we have grafted have been aggressive growers too. So we know it's a pretty vigorous mango tree, uh, kind of a mid to later season variety, and it is prone to mango bacterial black spot. So keep that in mind if you have that issue in your area, but uh, probably a fine choice for people on the west coast of Florida or in central Florida where bacterial black spot just doesn't seem to want to become established and certainly uh, a good option for people out there in California or maybe even Arizona um, if you're so adventurous. So um, yeah, uh, I, uh, I love this mango. Now this mango tastes amazing and you told me about yeah. this years ago we tasted it. Yep. But from what I'm hearing now, this is the new hottest mango that people are trying to get and hearing about. This is it, 2024. What I'm hearing is this is the, the the new hot mango. Well, I hope so. I want to see people planting this. I want to see how it does for other people besides me. Um, and Gary Zill obviously has the old tree. Uh, but otherwise, like I don't have reports from other people who are growing it to compare notes on. Um, we're kind of just going off of this one tree in terms of its performance, but it's been a good performer for us with the exception of the bacterial spot issue. I have re gotten intact fruit off of it anyway. <laughs> Uh, we had intact fruit off of it last year, but we certainly lost a good number of them to, uh, to bacterial spot and rot, if you will. So um, just something to keep in mind. Um, but uh, it definitely bears very well. It's a strong producing mango tree. One of the best tasting mangoes I've ever tasted. Yeah, it is. It really is. That's not an exaggeration. This is one of my favorite mangoes to eat. When I was out here last year uh, with an employee, uh, harvesting mangoes. Every time we came by this tree, if we found a good one, um, uh, we'd keep it and eat it. Um, you know, we sold some, of course, but like we loved this mango so much, we'd always have to take a bite out of it while we were working. So, uh, we, uh, Giselle is an awesome tasting mango. All right, thank you. Okay, everybody, that was Alex at Tropical Lakers Farms. His link is below, and on his website, you can see detailed information on every single one of those varieties that he mentioned. Now, those are only eight of the many different varieties he has. He has hundreds of varieties there, but in 2024, those are looking very promising and doing excellent and uh, good choices if you're looking to start uh, growing mangoes here in 2024 to get one of those trees so i recommend them i have a good amount of those trees uh, on my properties and i wish i had room for all of them uh, but uh it's it's just wonderful and a pleasure to know alex and everything he's teaching uh, tropical acres farms definitely check them out if you have comments or questions about anything we discussed in this video or any other videos put them below and if you have uh, a place, a backyard where you're growing mangoes and you'd like me to come out and feature you on the channel, I'd love to, especially if you're here in South Florida. So please comment below as well. My contact information is below. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, it's my goal to learn as much as possible about growing fruit trees and growing vegetables uh, and sharing them with people so we can all learn together and grow together in more ways than one. So thank you everybody for watching. Put your comments below. Have a great day everybody and keep growing.